Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of CUDA Crash Course. Uh, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to continue uh, on matrix multiplication, but we're going to do an optimized version of matrix multiply uh, today. Uh, so previously, we had mentioned a couple of things before, such as uh, there's going to be some optimizations we can do to make certain types of algorithms faster. So one of the most common things we want to speed up is matrix multiplication. So cache tiling is a very common way uh, to speed things up. So let's go ahead and get started. So today in this video, what are we going to do? We are going to first understand why cache tiling is a useful optimization. And then we'll see how it can be applied to matrix multiplication, uh, especially matrix multiplication uh, using CUDA within GPUs. So let's start with cache tiling. So what's the problem? So the problem is that DRAM is slow. Uh, if we remember back to what we previously did, what we uh, ended up having was uh, some, our, we mem copy our two matrices, our input matrices into uh, memory, into DRAM, and then we would have to load them in uh, when we're going to do all of our calculations. Now, we're going to get some locality within the uh, L1 and L2 caches because there is value reuse between uh, different threads. However, the problem is we still have times where maybe there's going to be conflicts or things will get evicted from the cache and we have to go all the way up back to main memory. And if you're familiar with computer architecture at all, you know that you know, main memory is pretty slow and we don't want to be going out there if we can avoid it. So what we'd like is a way to have fewer memory related stalls. That way, more of our time is spent towards computation or doing useful work. Uh, so this idea of how can we maybe guarantee that things are going to be in the cache? So what's the solution? So the solution in terms of uh, uh, CUDA uh, enabled GPUs or NVIDIA GPUs is this idea of shared memory, sometimes called scratch pad memory. So what scratch pad memory is, it's a user managed L1 cache. That's the easy way to think about it that's private per thread block. Now, what do we mean by user managed? So when we say user managed, uh, managed, this means that the programmer actually loads values directly into shared memory, and then it stays there. That way we can get that uh, very nice uh, five cycle or so, five, 10 cycle access time uh, to shared memory versus the hundreds of cycles it would take to go all the way out to DRAM. So, Let's continue on. So uh, the other big uh, thing that's really nice about uh, using shared memory and cache tiling is that when we have very large inputs, the entire input won't, won't fit in the cache. So our solution to this is let's only put the pieces of the large input that we're using right now in the cache. And that way we can always know that uh, what's in the cache is useful. So that's what we're gonna do with shared memory. All right, so how does this look with matrix multiplication? So we'll start out with a familiar type diagram. So we're going to have uh, A times B uh, is equal to uh, matrix C. Uh, we're just going to do square matrices here. So as before, uh, with our original naive implementation of matrix multiply, we would have each thread calculate, uh, calculate a single element within this uh, uh, within the C matrix. Now, every thread is still going to calculate one element within the C matrix, but now instead of uh, sweeping across all of A at a time, it's now going to sweep across a subset of A, and that subset of A is going to be our tile. So it's, we're going to end up sweeping you know, step by step by step. So every uh, loop iteration will progress the tile by its tile size. And so for um, in our case, we're going to be doing uh, simply, you know, uh, an integer number of moves that perfectly lines up with the square matrix because the square matrix will be a power of two and then uh, our, our matrix size will also be, uh, so our matrix size will be a power of two and then our tile size will also be a power of two. And we'll make sure that that can divide evenly. Um, it's not much harder to, in case your matrix, uh, your matrices aren't sized perfectly but you just need to add a little bit of error checking code. So uh, so 
how does this differ? So previously, when we were calculating, uh, uh, when we were calculating values, we didn't have to worry about what value values we were using at that exact moment because we didn't care about latency. We were just going all the way out to DRAM, uh, possibly, uh, and we just wanted to make sure we were getting that exact element as we marched along an entire row, an entire column of B. But now with shared memory, like we said, it's programmer managed. So what do we need to do e uh, for each tile on each iteration? So we're going to need uh, we're going to need the, uh, need to load the values of this block. Oops. We're going to need to load the value of this block of A that corresponds to this A matrix, and then this block corresponding to the B matrix into our scratch pad or shared memory. So an important thing to note is that when we're loading from the A matrix, uh, the way that we're going to index this is go. we need to think that this is a constant row, meaning threads here, as we progress along, their row doesn't change, only the column changes. So it's a loop varying column. And then for the B matrix, because the tiles are moving downward along the, uh, the Y axis of the B matrix, we're going to have a constant column, but a loop varying row. So what is our actual cal uh, calculation going to look like? So it's actually going to be pretty simple compared to our, uh, our original matrix multiply. Our original matrix multiply, we had to think about what global value of C or of A and B we were grabbing from. But because we're loading everything into these tiles, uh, we're just going to index purely by uh, our thread ID within that actual tile. Now, uh, the tiles in this case uh, are a proxy for uh, a thread block. So our tile size will be the same size as our thread block size. So uh, a tile, uh, in our case, will be 16 threads by 16 threads. So that's what we mean by tile size in this case. Uh, but like we said, we're taking a large input and we're reducing it to the size uh, of our thread blocks at each loop iteration. So we're only working on a small chunk of the entire problem at a time. And then, uh, so as we also kind of imagined, so uh, for A, the row is loop invariant. So when we're doing our calculation for our temp values, every tile iteration, uh, a thread will go across A, and then it will go down B, but just within that tile. Uh, and so it's, it's the same as kind of we saw before. So the column being loop invariant and the row being loop invariant, depending on which matrix we're selecting. So that's going to do it uh, as far as a uh, quick little background. So let's get to the actual code. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio and uh, a lot of this will be exactly the same. So uh, our answer checking function, our matrix initialization, even our problem size will still be a 1024 by 1024 matrix. Uh, and so we're not going to go through all the allocation and memory copies because we've done that in the previous videos. Uh, I have added the uh, freeing of device memory and host memory. Uh, that's good practice. It doesn't make much of a difference for our case because uh, uh, our program exits immediately after this, so it will get freed anyway, but it's good practice. So let's go ahead and get to our kernel. So it's going to be tiled matrix multiply. Uh, so the first thing we need to know is shared memory. So shared memory can be allocated two ways. It can be dynamic or it can be static. So in this case, we'll do simplicity. So it will just uh, have a constant value in this case. Uh, like I said previously, we're going to have thread blocks that are 16 threads by 16 threads, uh, which will be a total of 256 threads per thread block. Uh, and we're going to have our shared memory size equal, uh, set that equal to um, one element per thread gets loaded at a time. So for if we have uh, 256 threads in a thread block, that thread block will load 256 elements. And remember, shared memory is uh, thread, block, uh, thread block private, so uh, we have to do this for every single thread block. So in this case, a size of an integer is four, so I just wrote that out as a literal, and then 16 times 16. And then in here, if we use this prefix shared uh, ahead of this uh, array, 
that says this is going to be stored in shared memory. So that's how we denote that it's this, uh, we're going to use this scratch pad memory or this uh, programmable or user managed cache. So then uh, some things we've seen before, we'll go ahead and just for, for the sake of brevity, we'll shorten thread ID X to just TX, uh, TY, BX and BY for block ID. Uh, that's just to, so we don't have to keep writing this over and over uh, as the long form. Then we'll calculate our global row and our global column as we've seen before. And then we see uh, this new uh, this new thing that's uh, different or that starts to differentiate tile matrix multiplication. So now, instead of just iterating over the entire matrix uh, one at a time or uh, an, a loop that will go over the entire length of the matrix, this time, we are going to do it an, uh, based upon uh, the total size of the matrix divided by the tile size. So the amount of tile steps there are in the matrix. So here we'll say n, which is our matrix size divided by tile size, which in this case is 16 because we have a 16 by 16 thread block. Uh, and to kind of just clarify that a little bit, uh, the reason why it's that is uh, if you think about how many threads you need uh, to completely line up uh, on the X direction and the Y direction. So if the X direction of the matrix is size 1024, you would need 1024 divided by 16, uh, which would be the number of thread blocks. So let's see how our indexing works. So for our indexing into loading shared memory, so to load shared memory, it's like anything else. It's like a regular array, except uh, in the back end, it's going to be put into that user managed L1 cache. So to calculate which row for the A matrix, we're going to start with row times N. Uh, because it's the A matrix, the row is going to be constant because remember, for the A matrix, we go across the rows. And then in order to calculate the column that is changing, first we need to index the set of columns that we're working on. So remember that tile has only a subset of the total columns. So this will give us which subset of the columns we're working on. And then the actual thread in the X direction will say which column within that set we're going to work on. Then uh, for the B matrix, it's exactly the opposite. So uh, the rows are changing and the columns are invariant. So here are column indexes the global column that we're going to work on. Uh, I times tile times N will index the new set of rows. So whatever the iteration number is times the tile size times N uh, because we have to think about this in uh, how it's laid out linearly in memory. So if we want to move to the uh, next spot in memory, we have to go over uh, the entire block that would be associated with that entire row. So we have to multiply it by the matrix size. And then in order to get the specific row within that set of rows, we do our thread ID Y, which will be up and down, uh, times in the matrix side. So the number of elements between uh, this row, or say row one and row two, there'll be n elements in between there. So that's why we multiply by n. And so that's what we'll do in order to load things into uh, this A and B. So every single thread will load a single element in there. And then we have to call sync threads. So this is a new thing now. So what sync threads does is it says every single thread within this thread block has to be done by this point. So it's a barrier. And the reason why we need that is because down here, uh, so after we go through here and we do this loop iteration and we go all the way back up here, we don't want to start stomping memory. So uh, we're loading all this stuff into shared memory under the assumption that, you know, even though only one thread is loading that value, many threads are going to access it. So we call sync threads here in order to make sure that everyone's finished loading their values before we proceed. So then we do this second loop. This is our actual calculation. So this just says that we're going to, for every thread is going to sweep across the rows within the tile and the columns within the tile. 
and that's simply indexed by uh, for for a it's just going to be what row are we and then the only thing that changes this loop invariant is the column as we go across the row and then it's going to be the opposite for B so uh, the row we're going to be accessing because we're going downward uh, down a column a single column uh, that's going to be changing with the loops so of J times tile size and then uh, a loop invariant column so that plus TX just says which column are we going to be on uh, within that tile and then we call a sync threads again and the reason why we call this sync threads as I already mentioned if some of these values haven't been computed yet and we didn't have a sync threads here we would go back up to the top of the loop and we'd start overwriting shared memory potentially before some people have read shared memory so we need two sync threads here one to make sure that everything's loaded and then one to make sure that everyone is finished accessing all right and then finally after we've done all the iterations we will write out to DRAM now uh, this temp value that we've been storing up here uh, and that's it so that's going to uh, go ahead and do our kernel so we'll go ahead and build uh, we'll go to Solutions Explorer, we'll rebuild this, should go uh, just fine, and then we'll run it. And it will go through an error checker, and let's see if it gives us an error. No error, so it looks like it completed successfully. Now, I claim that this was going to be faster than our naive implementation, so we can do a quick check to make sure that it is. So let's go ahead and open our previous project. So let's open our naive matrix multiplication. So uh, that's this simple loop over. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is our simple loop over every single element and then multiply uh, and do the row times column. But we're accessing global memory here. So we can use insight and we can start performance analysis. We'll profile the CUDA application. We'll launch. And then we can look at launches. So here uh, in duration, we see that we have, uh, it doesn't look like it, I can zoom in on that. So we have uh, a little over 18.7 K microseconds, right? So about 18 milliseconds in order to do a 1024 times 1024 uh, a matrix multiplication. So let's see what happens when we do uh, our tiled matrix multiplication. Okay, so we don't need to save that. Let's open up tiled again. Insight, start performance analysis, profile, and launch. We'll go to launches and look down here. So now we're all the way down to uh, 8K microseconds, all the way down from 18K. So we saved about, uh, uh, so we saved 10,000 microseconds between cache tiling and our naive implementation. So that's a, that's a really huge win when you think about performance increases. So in later videos in the series, we'll go into other uh, opportunities we have to even further optimize this matrix multiplication, uh, digging into some of the architecture a little bit, as well as how to optimize other types of uh, applications and when maybe optimizations kind of fail or break down. But that's going to do it for today. So as always, if we go to uh, the GitHub page for Coffee Before Arch, here we go. So if we go just to the profile, so we have all the courses that we've been working on. Here's the CUDA programming one. And then we have links to all the previous videos, including the one that we first talked about matrix multiplication. And here's our tiled matrix multiplication that we went through today. All right, so that's going to do it. I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you had a nice day.